Online, Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. The draft has concluded. Oh, what an interesting draft. We started out with such fire and fury. I thought that we were going to have the draft of all drafts, and then Mr. Gettleman, he, he, he's, he, I don't know. I, I'm not sure after pick two, what happened? I mean, you get Xavier McKinney. I mean, this dude is a plug and play day one starter from Alabama. 6'1, 200 pounds at safety. Oh my God. I mean, I cannot believe he fell down to us. He he he's 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 a kid that's fluent. He pl- fluid. He he plays with attitude. I mean, he he'll smack a guy in the mouth all game long. He, in in coverage, he's extremely instinctive. I mean, he he follows the flow. He, he mirrors the eyes of the quarterback. He excels at that. He he in college he suckers the quarterbacks and baits him into make throws in the middle of the field. And he takes such good angles in the arrival time. He, he's he when the Giants got Landon Collins in the second round that draft, I was like, you know what, great player. I'm glad we got him, but he is going to have issues in coverage because you know what, you have issues in coverage in college. You're still going to have it in the pros. This kid Xavier, he he's he's got it all. I mean, he's not afraid of contact. He loves to stick it to the ball carrier. I mean, he is. Now is is he you know is he a lockdown guy? No, but you know what? He's not going to get burned. You know he he's he's versatile. He he'll play in the box. He'll make the tackles. You know, you know what? He his work. You know, I mean, his deep range probably isn't there. But you know what? We're not we're not drafting him. You know, to play center field. You know, we're gonna have Peppers probably end up doing that. But you saw that pickup, and you're like, oh, my God, Gettleman has got it right with Thomas. He's got it right with Xavier. And then the wheels fall off the bus in round three. Oh, Matthew. Matthew. I can never say it. it's Pert. Pert. Yeah, I don't even know how to say his last name. Over at UConn. I've talked to a couple people about him. And a lot of people did not even have him on their boards. I mean, he is what they would refer to as a project guy, a developmental guy, not a guy you take in the third round. I talked to one ex-scout that told me today that maybe if you go into year three with him, you may have something. They all said the same thing. Watch the U, uh, UCF game. I mean, he, he's not ready for prime time. You know, and, and, and Joe Judge, I hope to God he is a good teacher because this kid's hands placement is, is, is god awful. He's, he's, he's going to get flagged so many times. You know, he's not a mauler. You know, he's, he's a systems guy. And here, and that's another thing they told me. This guy, he'll develop if he is a system guy. And this is what's worried me about the draft. We seem to have picked up a lot of systems guys. Are, did we go up and we did we go up and look at the potential of finding guys with talent, or are we actually looking for a systems guy? He he's got below average strength. Everyone tells me he's going to be best utilized in a zone blocking scheme. So I maybe that's what we're going with. But he is a, he is a round three reach. I mean, a reach beyond reach. Then we go into fourth round. We pick up Holmes from UCLA. Blazing speed. Problem is he's only 5'10", 192 pounds. Yeah, he's 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 got the juice. He's got the speed. He's not a tackler. He does not like contact. Watch some of the film on him. Watch the Washington State game. 
You know, he has lapses in coverage. I would not say that his his football IQ is is up there. You know, he 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 he's he sh- he should play off man coverage. So I mean, he's physically gifted, but again, he needs to be in the proper scheme. And then I love it because okay, we pick up Xavier, which probably means Julian Love can now turn around and go back to playing his his more natural position that he played at Notre Dame as a slot, you know, as as a slot corner. But I I don't get it. Again, I don't get the Holmes pick. I, I'm not I'm not seeing I'm not seeing top tier talent when you've already drafted DeAndre Baker, Beal, Corey Ballantyne. You know you you've already picked up. I, I Julian Love, <laughs> I mean, and you pick up another corner at four that we probably could have had. Again, later in the draft, and like I said, I, 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 I don't, I don't get it. And then we go into some of our other picks. We go into Lemieux out of Oregon in the fifth round. I mean, again, six four, three hundred sixteen pounds. You know, he's versatile. He's more of a run blocker. He's, again, going to be a scheme guy. He's got a lot of work to do in his pass protection with his footwork, with his hands. You know, again, he may be, same scout told me the same thing, he may be a starter in year three or four. And he's a guy that, again, is going to be a systems guy. Not the most talented. He is athletic, he's physical, in the run game, but he can't pass block. You know, and and that's just, you know, he's also not very flexible. There's no flexibility there. He's going to be, I don't know. He's an interior lineman, but again, he is going to have to be a guy that plays well in a system. And like I said, I I don't quite understand you know what made us think we go that way. Then we go and draft Cam Brown, Penn State. Can uh, we uh, Penn State has not had a linebacker drafted I think since 2013. 65 233 pounds. Oh Cam. He is a long, big guy, tall guy. He is going to be someone that potentially has potential in the blitz. The problem is he's got a long frame. He, he lacks the NFL size and mass. He's going to need to add on additional strength just to fend off blockers. You know, he, he doesn't play well in space. He doesn't he doesn't have anticipation in zone coverage. You know, he his open feeling tackling has always been a major concern. I mean, again, he is going to be a systems guy. He is going to be projected probably more at his size. I can't put him on the edge. He's going to be more of a 4-3 linebacker. But he he has no size. He has no bulk. I mean, he... Again, he is going to be someone that needs to fit into a certain scheme and a certain system. And then we get into Carter Coughlin. Carter Coughlin, 6'4", 234 pounds, edge out of Minnesota. They have him listed as a linebacker, but he's going to have to play in the edge position. He's going to have to. He, again, he he's going to have to find success 
he's a niche guy. He he's gonna you know he, that's what he is. And we actually did a, we actually did a little video on him. You know he's agile. He's quick. You know he can attack the defense. He he's gonna be a good pass rusher. He may be a good pass rusher. You know, but he's gonna have to transition maybe in the linebacker. He 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 again. He's a niche guy. And that's what he's going to be. He's going to be another systems guy. And I always and I've been thinking to go back to the Gettleman comment of, you know, we don't we don't need to pick the best talent. We need to, you know, that we may we don't may not be picking the best talent. We may be picking the guys that fit our system. We picked a lot of guys that hopefully fit our system after round two. I don't understand it. We had victory. You know. We snatched defeat out of the jaws of victory. I mean, if you look at it, we have, if you look at talent-wise, we have one, two, three, four, five. I'm not even going to get into the seventh round picks because your, your, seventh, your seventh round picks to me, you know, you'll be lucky if you're on the practice squad. Carter Coughlin was the only one that I really want to get into. But again, like I said, you look at this, we picked a lot of systems guys and we're filling our linebacker position are trying to with four linebackers taken in the sixth and seventh round. That's going to be our linebacker depth. We pick up another corner when we just drafted a boatload, took the best safety in the draft. Wow. Julian loved backed into his natural position, a defensive backfield. And then we take, and then we take a, Project lineman at three at ninety nine overall. I am not disappointed in the first two rounds. I think we found plug and play talent right away. I am disappointed on after what happened after that. We still have not addressed the edge issue. If we think that we are going to generate a pass rush with Leonard Williams. We are going to have a lot of problems. And I go back to even the Joe, Joe Judge comment where he said, well, you know what? If we don't have an elite guy, maybe we have four or five guys that can do the same thing. Well, I hope you find those four and five guys that do the same thing because to me, the linebacker positions are still outside of Blake Martinez is still a lot of question marks. Kyler, you know what? The, the Green Bay thought so high of Kyler that like we said before, last year they signed two free agents and drafted a guy to replace him after ten and a half sacks. So I'm not expecting the world out of that. I'm not expecting the world again right now to Ryan Conley because he's hurt. And then we look at the edge again. We 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 don't have an edge. We don't. We fix the problem at safety. I think our defensive backfield is set, and which is going to be good because I don't think we're going to generate a pass rush. I don't think our linebackers are set. I don't think we, we didn't even address the center issue. <laughs> I mean, good Lord, this, this could go on for hours. But you know what? I'm going to give Gettleman an A-plus for Thomas and Xavier. I call him Xavier because like he's like he's like I think he's like my new buddy now, but beyond that he gets an F. Unless these, you know what? And I've said it before, and I hope Joe Judge is successful. I hope he goes thirteen and three divisional championships. I hope he's going to be awesome. But if we're drafting people not for talent but how they fit into our system, he better be the right coach. Or this is going to set the franchise back years. Okay, again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. We're going to go back to doing probably a three or four day schedule. Um, not that we don't enjoy doing trying to do videos daily, but you know, like everything else, like everyone else out there, we got a lot going on in life, um, and we, you know, we enjoy doing this. Plus, I am going to be. Um, Sliding over to do some, I'm not going to say with what channel yet, but I, once it's finalized, I'll let you guys know. It's, we're going to be doing uh, some NFL work for another channel. 
not just the Giants, but the NFL in general. So that'll be fun as well. But we are still number one Giant fans, and we will always be. We will keep this channel up and running, and we will try to provide you with the best information that we possibly can. So if you could like, if you could subscribe, if you could ring the bell, if you could do all that fun stuff, that would be awesome. And again, this is Tim with Online. We're we'll bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk entertainment. And as always, thanks for listening. Thank you.